Hello everybody and welcome back to Odin's Movie Blog. I am the critic who is a cynic. Hope you're doing well. And today I'm going to be breaking down the top worst movies of 2018. Now just a quick word on this list. This is not me saying that these are the worst made films by any means. These are just my least favorite films of 2018. And I have a variety of different reasons as to why. Possibly it was because I was extremely let down. Possibly it's because it was a terribly made movie. There are so many other things and so many other factors that could lead to these films. One of these films have ended up on my list but let's just go out with <laughs> without any further ado whatsoever let's get into some dishonorable mentions so these are ones that didn't quite make it onto my top five least favorite films of 2018 but they were still not very good films by any means the first one is going to be the cloverfield paradox so this was a film i was so excited for this is a film that i really wanted to be good i have been a huge fan of the cloverfield universe ever since the first cloverfield fi uh, film came out i thought that found footage film was great it was probably one of the best uses of found footage the monster looked great like the visual effects that they used for the monster were fantastic they kept the monster very limited so you couldn't really see him all that much which to me added to the fear and added to the um the sense of thrill that you got from watching the movie it's great it's a fantastic film it was followed up by 10 Cloverfield Lane, which it took place within the Cloverfield universe, but told a very different story, a very good dr dramatic film about essentially a post-apocalyptic world where there is a man who is in a bunker who discovers a couple people, brings them in, and craziness ensues. It has probably one of the best um, performances by John Goodman, and it is fantastic. If you've never seen 10 Cloverfield Lane, I highly recommend it. If you didn't like the first one because it was found footage, you will like this one because it exists within the same universe as the first Cloverfield, but it tells a very different story, and it's filmed very differently as well. It's not a found footage film at all. This film looked even better because this film not only exists within the same Cloverfield universe, but also looked to explain a little bit more about the origins of the monster, and also to give us a little bit better understanding about the events of the previous two films at least within the universe's perspective so what i like about these three films in general even this one is the fact that it it, it focuses on building the world it's focuses on world building which is very rare today you don't really see a lot of films like this where they're not exactly exactly prequels or sequels to a specific story but rather they take place within a specific universe and i would love to see more films do this make a film that takes place in a universe set up by a previous film but isn't exactly a prequel or sequel to a specific story in that previous film could be good unfortunately this one just misses the mark on so many different levels the pacing is disjointed the story overall is is just lacking in so many different ways and that's the reason why it is on my dishonorable mentions list and as you can see critics and audiences also were not very thrilled with this film very very sad i really hope that they're able to pick it back up make another cloverfield universe film and just do a lot better job than what they did very 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 pumped for this film Greatly disappointed, especially when it was released on Netflix, like the day of the Super Bowl. They said, oh, by the way, you can watch it now. I went to go watch it the next day as soon as I possibly could, and it was awful. So, uh, yeah, definitely, definitely a dishonorable mention. Another dishonorable mention to make it onto my list is Ocean's 8. So, Ocean's 8 is also one that got decent praise from critics for some reason, probably because they were, it's an all-female cast. This film has no reason to exist. It's already hard enough to try and justify Ocean's 13. <laughs> like, like you can already go to those films and say, wait a minute, Ocean's 11 was great. It was fantastic. 12 and 13 just copied what they did in the first film. And as each film came out, you thought to yourself, okay, why are we getting more and more of the same exact film? Ocean's 8 is a film that did not need to happen. Sure, some of the cast are great. I think Sandra Bullock does a great job. Kate Blanchett is also fantastic in this film. But overall, it's just a film where the whole time you're sitting there thinking, why in the hell does this film exist? Oh, wait, that's right, because it's 2018 and everything has to be about the whammon. So this is a terrible film. Audiences, as you can see, hated this film. Critics liked it. And unfortunately, it's because of the entire female dynamic. And the last one to be on my dishonorable mentions list would be First Reformed. So First Reformed has gotten huge praise from critics. It's a film that a lot of people would like to see a lot of Oscar nominations from and different Guild and Award uh, nominations for. And I personally just do not understand why. Is it a well-made movie? Yes. That's why it's not exactly on my top five worst films of 2018 list. But I didn't like it because what starts off very interesting, beautifully shot, like the entire film is beautifully shot, soon very and very quickly becomes a commentary on alarmism and how basically it becomes a huge film to try and preach the alarmist tactics of global war of global warming and it's not to say that it's i don't like it because i don't deny global warming but it's because i don't like alarmism and this film very much pushes towards alarmism and just when you think it's kind of mocking it and it's kind of trying to say yeah this is way too extreme 
certain characters do certain things that make yourself think, oh, wait a minute, do they really think this, or are they just being alarmist? And if you read some of the comments made by the director, you realize, oh, yeah, this guy is obviously that crazy. Again, there's nothing crazy about believing or uh, talking about solving global warming, but when you become alarmist about it, that's when it becomes a problem, and therefore this is my, very much my least probably out of all three of these on my dishonorable mentions, my least favorite film, because there are so many great things about it, and unfortunately, it just turns into a pretentious uh, diatribe about global warming. And the last film to be on my honorable or dishonorable mentions list would be Fantastic Beasts 2, The Crimes of Grindelwald. It just wasn't a good movie. I mean, it was two films fighting each other constantly for dominance, and it's just J.K. Rowling continuing to ruin her Harry Potter franchise, ruining the canon of the Harry Potter universe, and she just needs to stop. So, I know that she's already working on a third one but at the end of the day please make it as least damaging to the universe as possible and once you finish with it please stop making harry potter films because you obviously are just trying to make money at this point because you don't care about the characters because if you did you wouldn't be ruining the canon that's just where i stand on that not a film that i would recommend seeing and i'm dreading to see the third one all right starting now with my top five least favorite films worst films of 2018 coming at number five is solo a star wars story now i know a lot of you're probably thinking to yourself Hey, Odin, wouldn't this be a little bit higher on your list? But in the end, actually looking at the film itself, it's not a good film, which is why it's on my top five worst films. But out of the rest of the ones on my list, this is the one that I hate the least. This is the one that I could probably go back and watch like for laughs and for giggles and things like that. And overall, it's not the worst film that's ever been made. It's definitely not worse than The Last Jedi, because at least it's a coherent story that, you know, works from beginning to end. Are there some really bad plot points? Yes. Are there really some are there some really bad character arcs? Absolutely. But out of the rest of the ones on this list, this is by far not the worst that it could possibly be. And overall, it is sad, though, that a Star Wars movie is making it even onto, doesn't matter where it is, but the fact that a Star Wars movie is making onto my top five least favorite movies of 2018 is saying something. Coming in at number four is a film that a lot of people loved, at least critics did, because it's very artsy-fartsy, and it's very sad, because this is the same guy. This is the same um, writer and director who did Ex Machina, which is probably one of my favorite sci-fi films of the last 20 years. I know that I usually say the last 10 years, but seriously, Ex Machina is a brilliant sci-fi film. I was expecting to see something as good if not better and then we got Annihilation and Annihilation was just awful it was so boring it dragged it was pretentious basically it was everything that an Oscar bait film normally is where it's for the artsy fartsy high-end critics who try and say oh but it's so nuanced and oh my goodness there's an all-female-led cast or at least the main ones going in are all females and they're diverse too and so therefore it's amazing and that's just not something that makes a movie good. Diversity doesn't make a movie good. Having all female cast does not make a movie good. And also, pretentious <laughs> snobbery also does not make a movie good either. That's why it comes in at my number four least favorite film. Natalie Portman couldn't even save this film. And that's not really saying a whole lot. But it got a lot of love from critics. Audiences were kind of mixed on it, and I fell asleep. <laughs> so that's the reason why it's my least favorite, because it made me fall asleep. It was so boring, I had to watch it a second time. And even though I can appreciate the cinematography, because the cinematography is fantastic, and the look of it can be really cool at times, especially the visual effects, it doesn't save the movie from just being a pretentious slog fest. Anyway, coming in at number three, Ready Player One. This is a film that got way too much love and a little too much money at the box office. This is based off of one of my favorite books of all time. If you've never read the book by Ernest Cline, Ready Player One, it is absolutely fantastic it's great yes it does have a moment it has a section dedicated to a little bit of liberal talking points but other than that one section it's pure of nostalgia and it's fun and it, it's just fantastic the movie is none of those things though the movie is all <laughs> references it's all nostalgia but without any content whatsoever I'm very surprised that Steven Spielberg made this film and screwed up on this film as much as he did because I thought that he was going to be able to knock this out of the park, seeing that a lot of the references in the film actually come from his own universe, come from the films that, that he was a part of. And unfortunately, though, he drops the ball very, very, very far. He he just, he ruins the story. He, he basically, and it's not even that, actually, you know, it's not even that he ruins the story. He ignores the story altogether and instead says, you know what, I'm going to spend all this time trying to, you know, over CGI this movie because the biggest problem too with this is that the book portrays the uh, the inside world the digital world as looking a lot like the real world not really looking like a computer animation or looking like a computer um, you know a computer program and yet this film is just all CGI and it just looks awful it looks bad the characters don't look like the characters are portrayed in the book and it's just awful and even if I hadn't read the book beforehand there's still almost no real good story to this people come out of it liking it saying oh I loved all those references 
References don't make a movie good, though. And so when you actually take the references away, you see a very piss poor uh, story and st story and character arcs. And it's very sad because they had a really good cast playing these characters. I thought the cast fit their characters very well. Unfortunately, Spielberg just decided to say, screw the book. I'm going to ignore it and just do my own thing. And it was really bad. So definitely my one of my least favorite movies of 2018 for sure. Coming in at number two is a movie that I wish that I could take time back. Like all those other movies, I'm you know there's parts that I liked. This is a movie that I struggled to get through. This is a movie that I thought to myself, what the hell am I watching? Or even more, why in the hell am I watching this movie? This movie is, once again, one of those pretentious snob fests, snooze fests, so boring, the characters are completely unlikable, and you ask yourself, why in the hell was this movie made? This movie serves no purpose whatsoever. It might have good performances from Olivia Cook and the other person in the cast, but at the end of the day, it's just... A question of why did the hell does this movie exist in the first place cannot ever recommend watching this movie the fact that it says teen thriller genre is hilarious because it has no thrilling elements to it whatsoever it's completely boring skip it it probably should be my least favorite film of 2018 but there's one that beats that easily hands down and my least favorite film of 2018 is no surprise, A Wrinkle in Time. Not only does Ava DuVernay suck as a person and as a director, but she takes a story that was mediocre at best to begin with, takes away all the Christian elements, which are kind of important to the center of the story, and decides, oh, let's just make all the cast diverse and let's focus on that, and then we'll throw some visual effects, you know, put Disney's name on the title, and then everything will be good. No, everything's not good. This, this film is awful. It's a terrible adaptation of the book. It's a terrible movie in general. Bad pacing. The acting is uh, mediocre at best. Uh, the visual effects are cringeworthy a lot of the time. And it's probably one of the most expensive flops that's ever been seen. As you saw in my previous video when I talked about the biggest flops of, 20, of 2018, this was the second biggest flop of 2018. And it really is no surprise as to why that is the case. The fact that you have people coming out trying to say, I don't care about what some white man has to say about it. I care about what someone who's a mixed race has to say. What a, what a, what a small African-American child has to th think about this movie okay just because they're a certain race or a certain gender does not mean or does not make the movie different than what it is it does not change the reality of the movie and how stupid the movie actually is once again another movie that i could recommend never seeing ever in your life go read the book instead and even then you might not even like the book because the book as i said is mediocre at best i personally find meg's character in the book even in the book to be annoying as hell that continues in this movie and at the end of the day it just is devoid of any morality it's devoid of any heart and soul because christianity was a major part of the writers you know of the original writers uh, thought process and so to take all of that out is to leave a giant void and she tries to fill it in with diversity and guess what that doesn't work because diversity does not make a movie good especially when you ha don't have a story or characters to back it up but anyway guys these are my top five least favorite films of 2018 and my dishonorable mentions please let me know what you thought about this list in the comments below and let me know your least favorite movies of 2018 i would love to hear it. if you like this video smash that like button give me a thumbs up give me a subscribe you're amazing beautiful people more videos coming out in the future i'm going to be having my favorite movies of 2018 obviously my top 10 list of 2018 but i'm also tomorrow going to be having a most overrated and underrated list of 2018 some of these you might see again on the most overrated films of 2018 as you can see some of these uh critic scores have been high not in this case because the critics finally woke up and realized oh ava duvernay actually is a terrible director who has only received love because she deals with identity politics but that's just my thought but anyway guys thank you so much for watching have a great day and as always god bless